we're going to verify one of the properties of the derivatives of Bessel functions. And one of the things that we're going to show is that if we took the derivative of the Bessel uh, j1 of x, that's going to be equal to j1 of x divided by x minus j2 of x, right? And I tell you that j1 is this, okay? And then although we don't need this, this will help us to verify our other part of the answer. So first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and just take the derivative of this. And we're going to have to use our product rule because what you'll notice is that you have a function of x. Okay? So we have this c sub naught um, x over 2. So that's one function of x. And then we have the actual series that we need to find the derivative of. All right? So we use our product rule. Remember, our product rule says that if you have fg quantity prime, that's equal to f prime g plus f g prime. And let's define the first box, c sub naught um, x2, x over 2 as f, and then the series um, component as g. All right. So f prime is going to be equal to c sub naught times 1 over 2. Right. And then if I take the derivative of g, I'll call that g prime, all we're doing is we're just taking the derivative of this part right here. Okay, so that's going to be still series. Now, because we're taking the derivative, we are going to bump the lower index up by one. Right? So that's going to be series n equals one to infinity minus one to the n. And then we're going to have two n and then x to the two n minus one. Okay, so we just took the derivative and then the denominator is going to stay exactly the same. So 2 to the 2n, n factorial, and then n plus 1 factorial. Now, we're going to do some simplification on g prime, okay, just before we go through and try to make it equal to this, okay? Because remember, ultimately, we're trying to show that it equals that. Um, so if we take and, and look, there's a common 2 between the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so what that's going to do is that's going to reduce the order of the twos. Okay, so there's a two here and a two here, okay, and a base two. And so that just means that I'm going to subtract one from this two n. Right? Now, another thing that we notice is that there is an n factorial and also an n in the denominator. Okay, so there's an n and an n factorial. And remember, n factorial is the same thing as n n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, all the way down to 3, 2, 1. Okay, so that's our definition of n factorial. And if we cancel out those common n's, we're just left with this, which is really n minus 1 factorial. So another way that we could write the g prime by doing a little bit of simpli simplification is going to be series n equals 1 to infinity. And then we have minus 1 to the n. We have x to the 2n minus 1. And then the dom in the denominator, we have 2 to the 2n minus 1. So we canceled, and that was the minus 1. And then instead of n factorial, we have n minus 1, because this n is going to cancel out with this n over here in the expanded definition of n factorial. And then we still have the n plus 1 factorial. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a change of variable, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to let n equal essentially going to be k plus 1. And the reason we do that is because if we subtract 1 from both sides, we have n minus 1 equals k, and that's going to make this move back down to 0, okay? So this is going to be now series k equals 0 to infinity, all right? And we want it to start at zero because, well, if you look at all of our vessels, that's where they start, okay? And we're gonna use a K and that's fine. It doesn't really matter what the index is as long as it fits one of these forms, okay? Um, that's gonna be minus one to the quantity K plus one. And then we're gonna have X to the two quantity K plus one minus one. So that's gonna be X to the two quantity k plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 to the 2 quantity k plus 1 minus 1. And then we're going to have k 
k plus 1 minus 1 factorial, and then finally k plus 1 plus 1 factorial. And if we simplify all of this, that's going to be now series k equals 0 to infinity. And then we're going to have, I'm going to break off one of the minus 1s. So that's minus 1, minus 1 to the k. And then we're going to get x to the 2k plus 1. All right, so we're going to have 2 times 1, 2. 2 minus 1 is positive 1. In the denominator, we're going to get the exact same thing for the power of 2. That's going to be 2 to the 2k plus 1. This becomes k factorial. And then we have a k plus 2 factorial. The last thing I'm going to do with this is because I want it to look like this for j2 at some point, I'm going to notice that both of these have a power of x to the 2n. And then the denominator has a 2 to the 2n. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break off these powers of 1. Okay, so the, basically these plus 1s. So basically like this x to the 2k plus 1, that could be written as x times x to the 2k. And this 2 to the 2k plus 1 could be written as 2 times 2 to the 2k. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this 2, this x, and this minus 1 to the outside of the series. All right? And that's OK, because none of those are contingent upon the index k. OK, so the variable there. So this really just becomes the opposite of x over 2. And then series k equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the k, x to k, x to the 2k. And then we have 2 to the 2k, k factorial, k plus 2 factorial. All right. Now, again, the whole thing we did with it here was we just simplified g prime. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to employ the product rule. Okay, so we have our f prime g plus f g prime. All right, so um, if we write this, okay, so f prime g plus f g prime. Now remember, we said that f prime, that was really easy. That was just going to be equal to c naught over 2, or c naught times a half. Okay, that's going to be c0 over 2. And then remember, g was the original series all the way back up here, this animal, all right? So this n equals 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n, all this stuff right here, OK? Um, so that's going to be minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n, divided by 2 to the 2n. And then we had, I think it was n factorial n plus 1. Okay, so just checking that. So n factorial times n plus 1. All right, so that's f prime g. Now f g prime is going to be, so if we go back up, remember f was c sub 0 times x over 2. All right, and then g prime is this whole thing that we just found. Okay, so we're going to end up with c sub 0 x over 2. And then we're going to multiply that by this whole thing. Okay, so times, we'll put this in parentheses, a negative x over 2. And then times this entire series. Okay, so I'm just going to fit that in here just because I know I'm not going to have enough space. So that's going to be our series. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let n equal k here. And I'm just going to replace all the k's with n's. All right, it doesn't really matter. So we have n equals 0 to infinity. And then we have minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n, divided by 2 to the 2n. And then we have n factorial and n plus 2 quantity factorial. All right. So now let's see what we have. All right. So take a look at this. OK. And I want you to notice, and I'm going to reduce the screen size so that way we can kind of compare it. OK. Um, if we notice this looks precisely like J1, okay? So just take a look at them. You might want to pause the video and take a look at it just to believe me. 
But this looks identical to this, except for this x right here. Well, that means that it's equal to j1 divided by x, because we're, um, we're basically saying that we have one less power of x, all right? And so we could just rewrite that whole thing right there. So this guy right here is just going to be j1 of x divided by x. Now, I want you to look at this. And by the way, this whole thing right here, um, what you'll notice is if we take a look at, I'm going to put in a different color just to make sure it's pretty apparent. So we take a look at this. Okay? And remember, this is all being multiplied together. I just ran out of room here. All right. If we go back up and we take a look, and remember, we're trying to show that it's equal to the opposite of J2, and J2 is equal to this. Okay. So um, let me erase this a little bit just so that we can see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the screen. And I want you to take a look at both of these, okay? Now, this expression right here, all of this, okay? We could certainly write that as C0 or negative C0 x squared over four. And that's exactly this. And then we have a minus one to the n, we have an x to the two n, we have a two to the two n, all right? And then we have an n factorial n plus two. So in reality, this whole thing is equal to the opposite of j sub two, right? So that's gonna be minus j sub two of x, right? And I think that's our derivative, and I'm certain that that's what we were supposed to prove, okay? So if we go all the way back up, remember, we were trying to show that j prime of x is equal to j sub 1x divided by x minus j sub 2 of x, okay? So it's certainly verified by doing all of this, right? Now, one last thing before we conclude this video. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, there are some recurrence, uh, there are some formulas that are satisfied by Bessel functions. And one of them, though we didn't prove it, is that if we take the derivative, all right, um, it could be equal to one of these two forms. And in fact, what we did was we actually just showed that j prime of one of x is equal to, now v was equal to one in this. So that's equal to one over x, j sub one of x minus j sub two of x. And this is precisely what we just proved, okay? Now, if we were to prove this, okay, we would have to do that by mathematical induction. Okay, so we would have to prove for a basis case, we'd have to show that it's uh, valid for that basis case, assume that this is true, and then prove it for every case thereafter. All right, so it's a little bit tough to prove those sorts of things. Okay, I remember when I was in graduate school, I had to prove something like that by mathematical induction. It wasn't terribly difficult, but um, not terribly fun. All right, so um, that's all for this video. Okay, so again, just making sure that we can go through and find our derivatives. Use that change of variable after you find the derivative, okay? So that's one of the most important parts is right here, you have your change of variable where n equals k plus one, okay? And that's always gonna be the key to these sorts of problems. And then from there, you just wanna simplify and then break off and then use your product rule to finish this off.